Welcome everyone to today's lesson. Yesterday we learned how to calculate the voltages of galvanic cells. Today we're going to learn how concentrations affect those voltages in a relationship developed by a man named Nernst and therefore it's called the Nernst equation. So um, remember not all cells are standard. They don't always have concentrations that are one mole per liter, and the pressures of the gases in the standard hydrogen half cell are not always one atmosphere. Now, if it is a standard hydrogen half cell, it is one atmosphere, but you can have other conditions for cells that are uh, not standard. <clears throat> in this case, the voltage of the cell is not equal to the voltage of the standard cell under standard conditions. So, we're going to look at a couple of equations here from our past where we know that delta G under non-standard conditions can equal delta G under standard conditions plus RT times the ln of Q. Now be careful, this Q is not charged, but it represents the reaction quotient for uh, an equilibrium situation where we have the concentration of products divided by the concentration of reactants following the laws of mass action. So, uh, if we take equation one, and we know that delta G naught equals minus NF times the voltage under standard conditions, when solutions are one molar, we have a second equation, two. And the third equation, delta G equals minus NF times delta E. Well, what if we substitute equation two and equation three into the first equation? So for delta G in the first equation, we're gonna substitute minus NF delta E. And for equation number two, delta G naught, here's delta G naught, we are going to substitute NF delta E in the equation for delta G naught, and this is the result we get. So again, delta G is equal to minus NF delta E, and delta G naught is equal to minus N F delta E cell. Now F, remember, is a Faraday, which is the charge on a mole of electrons, and N is the number of electrons in the half cell reactions. So this is a, an equation we can generate now. To simplify this, we're gonna divide every term by minus N F. So, Again, where N is the number of moles of electrons and F is a Faraday, the charge on a mole of electrons. And once we do this, we can cancel out in uh, N minus NF in these four locations. And we end up with this equation. So delta E of a cell is equal to delta E under standard conditions of the cell, E naught of the cell, minus RT divided by NF, notice it's a minus, because it was a minus NF here on the bottom. And all this is multiplied by the ln of Q. And this famous equation is called the Nernst equation, and it's very useful. Uh, in fact, electrochemists can use voltages of uh, cells to actually figure out concentrations of unknown solutions. So it has a practical application that's widely used. <clears throat> and it can also be used to calculate, of course, the cell voltage of a non-standard cell. So a cell that has concentrations other than one mole per liter, and if it's using a gas bubbling through the solution, be a gas that's not at one atmosphere of pressure. So, then again, N is the number of moles of electrons, and F is a Faraday, which is a charge on a mole of electrons which you're given as 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. So when we look at this particular cell here, made up of two half cells, we have a half cell on this side, a half cell on this side, together it is a completed electrochemical cell. You can see again, the voltage is given. You can see that in this case, the oxidation is happening on the left here, the reduction is happening on the right. And this is not a standard cell because the concentrations of our ferrous 
and our ferric ion are not one mole per liter. So we could use the Nernst equation here. Now, let's talk about special cases for the Nernst equation. So here was the uh, original equation here. Well, if we take R and T and F, which are given as numbers, R is 8.315. Temperature, of course, is Kelvin. And if it's, uh, if it's uh, most reactions are carried out at 25 degrees Celsius or 298K, and F is a Faraday, again, which is 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. We can, we can actually calculate those numbers and we can get a, a value of 0 0.0592. And that is what we can use if the solution is, uh, contains non-standard cells. Now, if uh, in case one, if every solution is one mole per liter, the Q value will be equal to one and the ln Q, ln of one is zero. So we end up with an equation that's simplified here. So the voltage of a cell is equal to the voltage of the cell under standard conditions when every solution has a concentration of one mole per liter. Well, what about case two? If the cell is dead, the cell is at equilibrium. So E of the cell is zero volts. And in this case, Q equals K, the equilibrium constant for the cell. And again, we get, if the cell is dead, the voltage would be zero. So zero equals E naught of the cell minus RT ln F uh, divided by NF times the ln of K, natural logarithm. So the natural logarithm of K equals uh, E naught of the cell times NF divided by RT. And K is gonna equal E to the power of the voltage of the cell under standard conditions times NF divided by RT. Very useful equation. So in summary, for these different equations, uh, the delta G is equal to the work done um, by the electrons as they flow through the electrochemical cell. And that can equal minus Q times delta E. It can also equal minus NF times delta E. And it can equal minus IT times delta E, because remember, Q equals IT. In this case, Q we're talking about is the charge. So let's check out what the units are for each of these equations. So the units for um, Q charge are coulombs and voltage delta E is joules per coulomb. Well, when we multiply a coulomb by a joule per coulomb, the coulombs conveniently cancel because that's in the numerator, this is in the denominator, and we end up with a unit of a joule. Now let's see for the second equation. Uh, N is the number of moles uh, <clears throat> of electrons. F is a Faraday, it's the charge on a coulomb. It's a charge on a mole of electrons, so we have coulombs per mole of electrons. And delta E again being voltage is a joule per coulomb. So again, we can take the moles of electrons in the numerator here, the moles of electrons in the denominator and cancel them. We could take the coulombs in the numerator and cancel it with the coulombs in the denominator. So again, this equation generates an answer that is in joules. And the third equation, again, we can get I is a coulomb per second. It's current, time is in seconds, and uh, delta E is in joules per coulomb. So again, if we cancel out here, we get a coulomb in the numerator, a coulomb in the denominator, a second in the denominator, a second in the numerator, and we end up with a joule. So here is an equation again that we generated where the the voltage of a cell under non-standard conditions equals the voltage of a cell under standard conditions minus RT divided by NF times the ln of Q. Now remember, the ln of Q is approximately equal to 2.303 times the log to the base 10 of Q, another constant. So I'm showing you where that 0 0.0592 comes from. So if you multiply 
2.303 times R, which is 8.315 times 298K, and divide it by uh, a Faraday, which is 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. That's where that 0 0.0592 comes from. And notice the ln, the natural logarithm, has changed into the log. So this is a very useful equation here to calculate the voltage of a cell under non-standard conditions. <clears throat> if you know the concentrations of the ions, or you can use the voltage of the cell to calculate a concentration of an unknown ion in one of the half cells. So K also can be equal to, if you use the natural logarithms, K is also equal to E to the power of E naught of the cell times NF divided by RT. So you can also use this equation here to calculate the equilibrium constant for a cell. So if you're using the uh, logarithm, then you can also calculate K is 10 to the power of uh, N times delta E cell divided by 0 0.592. So just depends on what you're given in the question, which equation that you use. Now, uh, Let's do a little bit of a review here for the thermodynamic and electrochemical and equilibrium functions and how they're all related to each other. And you can see uh, here is a nice little chart that shows you the relationships between K and E naught of the cell and delta G under standard conditions. We can use calorimetric data using heats of formation. We can get data for entropies or changes in entropies and we can use these equations, very useful uh, relationships that exist between these values. Okay, so we're going to solve a question now, and we're going to uh, solve a question involving an electrochemical cell, and it's made up of a permanganate ion changing to a manganese 2 plus ion, and we also have a zinc half cell uh, where we have a zinc solution and a zinc electrode and first thing we're going to do is show how you write equations for these reactions at both the anode and the cathode remember oxidation happens at the anode in a galvanic cell this is a galvanic cell reduction happens at the cathode so we're going to write the overall cell reaction we're then going to identify the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent we're going to calculate the standard voltage of the cell if the concentrations were one molar. And then we're going to calculate the voltage of the cell under non-standard conditions if it's got a pH of two. If you're given the manganate permanganate uh, ion concentration is 0.12 moles per liter. The manganese ion is 0 0.0010 mole per liter and the zinc ion concentration is 0 0.015 moles per liter. Then we're going to calculate the equilibrium constant for this cell once the equilibrium is established. And then we're going to talk about the significance of the size of K. And the last thing we're going to calculate, if we actually switch this electrochemical cell uh, into an electrolytic cell by hooking it up to an external voltage and we drove the equation in the opposite direction, what mass of zinc would be deposited? if you had a current of two amps applied for 2.5 uh, hours, I believe that is, sorry. I think that question, yeah, 2.5 hours. So just missing H here. It's in your course book on page 270, this particular question, your course pack. So I'm gonna uh, recommend that you stop right now and try to solve this question on your own. But I'm gonna continue and solve it for you here. But I do highly recommend you do it yourself first, okay? So here is our first half cell. It's permanganate changing into mang MN2 plus ion and zinc ion changing into zinc. If I was to balance this equation, I was only given permanganate ion and uh, MN2 plus ion. Remember, we could balance it by balancing oxygens first. We can always use water to balance oxygens. So we see that we have four oxygens on the left. We're gonna need four waters on the right to balance the oxygens. And when we balanced oxygen, we now unbalanced hydrogens. 
So there are eight hydrogens now on the right, so we would have to add eight H plus ions because all water solutions have H1 plus ions. Remember, there's that KW equilibrium going on between H1 plus and OH1 minus making waters. And then the last thing we're gonna do is balance the charge. You can see that if I add eight positives to one minus, I get seven positives. On the right, the charge is two positives. So it looks like I'm gonna to have to get rid of five of those positive charges to balance the charge so that the overall charge on the left is, is two, the overall charge on the right is two. So now you can actually locate this half cell reaction in a voltage table of standard voltages. And we can find that the standard voltage, when this is connected to a hydrogen half cell, is 1.51 volts. Now, when we, when we uh, look up the voltage of zinc two plus ion uh, being reduced to zinc, we can see its voltage is minus 0 0.76 volts. Well, of course, what this tells us is permanganate ion has a much stronger pull on electrons than zinc does. Therefore, the zinc, in fact, will not be reduced. The zinc will be oxidized. So that means we're gonna have to change this to a positive voltage, and E naught will be the sum of those two when we connect these two half cells together into a functioning galvanic cell. So we're gonna combine those two together and uh, see what we get. So there's the first reaction, but remember what we said about zinc, because it has a weaker pull on electrons, it is gonna be oxidized and not reduced. So zinc in fact is changing in the zinc ion and releasing two electrons. So, we can see the first equation has five electrons. The, the second equation has two electrons. We have to balance the electrons being exchanged. So common multiple of five and two is 10. So we're gonna multiply the first equation by two to give us 10 electrons, and the second equation by five to give us 10 electrons. So when we do that, in the first example, we're gonna multiply uh, the permanganate ion by two, the hydrogen ion by two, the electrons by two, the manganese ion by two, and the water, four waters by two, and we get eight waters. Well, to balance again the second equation, to end up with 10 electrons, we're gonna to have to multiply the zinc by five, and the zinc ion by five, and the electrons by five as well to give us 10 electrons. We now have uh, two half reactions that can be successfully combined because the number of electrons gained and the number of electrons lost is equal. So we're going to combine these two. And again, like I said, the voltage of the zinc is going to be uh, changed because it's being oxidized and not reduced. So when we add these two equations together, we can cancel out the 10 electrons and leave them out of the overall equation. So here's the answer to the question asking for the overall reaction of this uh, galvanic cell. And the voltage of the cell is 1.5 volts added to 0.76 volts, 2.27 volts. <clears throat> so uh, it, the permanganate ion was actually reduced, so we can call it an oxidizing agent. And the zinc, on the other hand, was oxidized, so it is the reducing agent. <laughs> so the next step here. Let's talk about part E, which is the non-standard cell. We want to calculate, again, the voltage of this non-standard cell. So again, we're going to use uh, the Nernst equation here, where Q, let's calculate what Q is. The reaction quotient is the, we look at the original equation, it's the concentration of zinc ion to the power of five. Of course, water is left out because it's a constant itself. Uh, we're going to then multiply it by the concentration of uh, M manganese 2 plus ion to the power of 2. And then we're going to divide that by the concentration of, of hydrogen ion to the power of 16 and divide it by the concentration of permanganate ion squared. And again, the concentration of zinc being a solid is a constant. It's not included in the reaction quotient Q. So uh, from the given values in the question, we were told that the zinc ion concentration was 0 0.015 moles per liter. So we're going to raise it to the power of five. The 
at manganese two plus ion was one times 10 to the minus three, which we're going to square. We were told the pH was two. Recall that the concentration of hydrogen ion is 10 to the minus pH. So 10 to the power of minus two is 0 0.010. And that's gonna be raised to the power of 16 because of this 16 in the equation. And then we're gonna divide that by the concentration of permanganate ion squared, which was given as 0 0.12. So get your calculator out, calculate that out, and you end up with 5.3 times 10 to the power of 18. Now, of course, we're gonna take the ln of that number and then uh, put it in this equation. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So we know the voltage of the cell, we calculated to be 2.27 volts from the voltages of the standard half cells. And now R is 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin. The temperature was at 298 Kelvin. We're gonna divide that by, there were 10 moles of electrons involved in this exchange. Remember, we canceled the 10 moles. And then we're gonna divide it by Faraday, which is the charge on a, a mole of electrons, 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. And again, like I said, we take the natural logarithm of 5.3 times 10 to the 18, multiply it by 8.31, multiply it by 298, divide it by 10, divide it by 96,485, and we end up with a voltage of 0.11 joules per Kelvin. Now, where do I get that unit from? Well, if you do the uh, canceling of the units, a Kelvin and a Kelvin cancel out, the moles and the moles cancel out, and you're left with a joules on the top, and you're left with a coulomb on the bottom, and a joule per coulomb, remember, is in fact a volt. So, so we can now solve, and we get a voltage for this non-standard cell, where the concentrations were different than one mole per liter, we get a voltage of 2.16 volts. So if we calculate K, we're going to use an equation that says K equals E to the power of E naught cell times NF, N being number of moles of electrons exchanged, F being the Faraday, this number here, divided by R, divided by the temperature. So let's calculate what this is first before we uh, use the uh, power of E. And we get 2.27 joules per coulomb times 10 moles of electrons, right here, <clears throat> divided by 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin, R, divided by temperature, 298 Kelvin. And we get an answer of 884 for this part of our equation. So K, will equal e to the power of 884, which is a monstrously large number, ginormous number. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the products will be much, much greater concentration than the reactants. So it means effectively that this reaction at equilibrium will have almost no permanganate ion in it. So, and that's what the significance of this is. So, in an equilibrium state, almost all of the permanganate, for all intents and purposes, all of the permanganate ion has been reduced to Mn2+. And again, you can tell there's a reduction going on by checking oxidation states. The oxidation state of the oxygen in the permanganate ion is minus 2 for a total of minus 8. So manganese in this particular permanganate ion must be plus 7. So manganese was going from a plus 7 state to a plus 2 state five electrons must have been involved. So each manganese ion gained five electrons to go from that plus seven state to the plus two state. And of course the zinc went from a zero state here to a two plus state here. It was losing two electrons. So it was oxidized. You can always use oxidation numbers to determine what is oxidized and what is reduced in a redox reaction. Very useful tools. So. Now we're gonna talk about the last part of the question, which says, what if we force this reaction backwards by applying an electric current? And the electric current we applied was two amps for two and a half hours. Well, if you recall there, this was the reaction that 
spontaneously happened in this galvanic cell. Well, if we flip-flopped it and drove the equation in the opposite direction by adding energy, we simply get this reaction happening. So we could actually electroplate out zinc. We could produce zinc from the zinc ion. So and let's calculate what mass of zinc we would create by using a current of two amps for two and a half hours. So uh, if you take a look at this reaction, we can see that five zinc ions require 10 electrons to get changed into zinc atoms. So we know that 10 moles of electrons can be used to drive this reaction and produce five moles of zinc. Well, that really tells us that one mole of electrons produces half of a mole of zinc because five is half of 10. Now we know the current, like I said, was two amps. An amp, remember, is a coulomb of charge delivered every second. And the time was two and a half hours. So we're gonna convert it to seconds because the current is coulombs per second. So we're gonna multiply this two and a half hours by 60 minutes an hour, and then multiply it by 60 seconds per minute. The minutes cancel, the hours cancel, we end up with 9,000 seconds. So in 9,000 seconds, what mass of zinc are we going to make? Well, remember, uh, Q, the charge, is current times time. So we're going to take our two coulombs per second and multiply by that 9,000 seconds. And we get 18,000 coulombs of charge. Well, 18,000 coulombs of charge, remember, we're going to deal with the moles of electrons in this case. So we're going to have to divide by a Faraday, which is the charge on a mole of electrons, 95,000, or sorry, that's a mistake there. That's, that should be 96,485, my mistake, 96,000. And the answer is 0.1866 moles of electrons. Well, we know from the stoichiometry of this reaction here that the moles of electrons, the relationship is two moles of electrons produce one mole of zinc. So we're going to divide the moles of electrons by two, and we end up with 0 0.0933 moles of zinc that are produced in this reaction. Now the last step to figure out its mass, we are going to take the moles of zinc that are produced and multiply it by the molar mass of zinc. And we end up with 6.10 grams of zinc being produced. Okay, well that kind of terminates the lesson for today. Those are the answers given in your course pack for the questions we just answered. And I suggest very strongly uh, further up this lesson by reading Petrucci and study the examples in Petrucci and then please uh, solve these problems in your textbook. Uh, the answers, remember, are all in the answer book so you can check whether you've done them correctly. And then there's a problem set six and on Q that I would like you to finish. Okay, so signing up for today. Thank you very much for tuning in to this particular lesson and uh, good luck with your hard work here.